Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. One of the video types that lots of people like to watch, myself included, are some devlogs. It's always fun to watch a quick video to see someone building their game week by week. However, just like with TV shows, sometimes you just want to wait until it's over and binge the entire series. So in this video, let's check out three game devlogs that start from nothing and already have been completed with the final game available on Steam. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity, which is currently having a best off sale on the Asset Store. Tons of the best assets are currently discounted, everything from gorgeous visuals to some awesome tools and systems. In fact, almost everything that I've previously reviewed is currently on sale. I can highly recommend the Odin Inspector if you want to build tools to improve your productivity. The A-Star Pathfinding Project, this one is an insanely fast pathfinding system that I've used in pretty much all of my Steam games. The all-in-one sprite shader for making your sprites look awesome. Also Feel, which is really awesome for adding that last bit of polish to your games. So if you're interested in any of those, you can go watch my full reviews on those assets to see how they work, and then browse the store to see everything that is currently on sale. Check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so let's look at some devlogs. And before I get to the first game, let me quickly mention my own. When I first started this channel, I was already hard at work on what eventually became Battle Royale Tycoon. I did some tutorial videos on various systems that I was working on the game, I made a series on the waiting queue AI, on the graph, the guest sprite sheets and the pretty complex task system. So those are based on what would become a Steam game, but they're tutorials, they're not devlogs. Although near the end, just before release, I did do some more standard devlogs, one of them implementing money and a restaurant, adding some really interesting VIPs to the game, adding some trading cards just before release, and finally, after release, I also made a video sharing my revenue stats. So that's my own contribution to the devlog genre. Whenever I start working on my next Steam game, I will definitely be doing a full series from start to finish, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so on to the complete devlogs. Let's start off with one of the most popular ones and one of the original ones. Here is the game Equilinox, which has devlogs in the channel Thin Matrix. The final game is a huge massive success. It's got over 2000 very positive reviews, so people really love the game. This one is definitely a top 1% in the game in terms of results, so it's really awesome that the entire dev journey is on video. When I said this is one of the original ones, I really meant it. There is a playlist with 125 videos, and the very first one came out in 2015 and the final game released in 2018. And actually before that, he was already experimenting with Java and OpenGL since 2013. The game is built on a custom Java engine. He was previously working on an action MMO and then changed gears to work on what eventually became Equilinox. The very first episode already shows a terrain prototype with some trees and animals. It's surprisingly close to the final game. He describes the game as a sandbox with various rules like sheep eating grass, wildcats eating sheep and so on. It's a game all about balancing an ecosystem and balancing biomes. So from the very beginning, the general idea of the game was already very solid. After a few devlogs on episode 15, we get to see how design is becoming more and more detailed. In this devlog, he also covers how he made a grid system for the game, splitting the world into various grid positions. So by doing that, it is much more performant for each entity to interact with nearby entities without having to check distance against every single entity. This episode also talks about the evolution mechanic, so how animals breed and how various traits increase their chance for survival, which in turn increase the prominence of that trait. He made a really nice visual test where he made the trait based on color, so sheep are spawned and the more red they are, the better the chance of survival. It's a simple mechanic, but it's really fun to see the evolution in action very visually. After a while, all the sheep are pretty much completely red, so it's really nice to look at. Then jumping ahead to episode 48, we see already quite a lot of changes. The game now has some post-processing, it's got various animations, lots more systems and mechanics. This one is one and a half years after the first episode. And actually this is a fun episode because he mentions rebuilding the entire game engine. This is one of the interesting pitfalls of building your own engine. Making an engine is an extremely difficult, extremely complex process. So by building it yourself, chances are you're going to miss some things, some engine feature that you will eventually learn about as you build more and more of your complex game. This game is an example of a very talented, very skilled developer that managed to make a successful game with a custom engine. However, for most people, I would definitely now recommend that path. Doing a custom engine and doing it properly with all of these features, doing that is extremely difficult. So generally, you have to ask yourself, do you want to build an engine or a game? You can't really do both. This is one of the extremely rare occasions where it actually worked doing both. At this point, the game now has a currency, it has points, which you can gain by achieving tasks and spend on upgrades for new animals and fauna. 
There's also now a growing system in the game, so the plants start off small and grow over time while also changing their visual look. And the task system also now has a prerequisite system which adds a nice progression to the game. You can place animals to complete tasks, gain resources with some more tasks, then spend those resources to unlock more animals and so on. So the core gameplay loop is already very well established by this point. Jumping ahead to an episode titled Planning for Release, which was about two months before the final release. This is another interesting episode because it covers lots of things that are absolutely essential to releasing a game, but if you've never gone through the whole process, going until the very end and releasing a game, if you haven't done that then you might not know much about this part of the process. He starts off by listing all of the things that still need doing, making a website, preparing all of the images and captions, getting the trailer done, setting everything up on Steam's backend, and of course announcing a proper release date. Also of course fixing lots of tiny bugs. Thankfully since he started doing the devlogs for such a long time, he managed to get a nice amount of people interested in playing the game and essentially being bug testers. If you're a solo developer then this kind of help is definitely extremely valuable. Everyone plays games in different ways, so you yourself cannot possibly ever find all of the bugs. Then finally the video announcing the release of the game, three years after the very first episode. This one is a huge milestone for any developers, and he even mentions that thankfully the game did much better than expected, both in terms of sales and reviews. But more importantly, right after release, a very important thing that again, if you've never taken a game to release you might not know about, which is post-launch support and updates. You might think that the second the game is out, the work is done, but that is far from the case. Release is just another milestone, and after that, things can become even more hectic. It all depends on how much testing and bug fixing you did before release. And if you do manage to have a successful release, you're also going to have tons of people suggesting ideas and asking for more and more post-launch content. So after release, there's still a bunch of videos, all of them covering post-launch content. So that's the development of Equinox, 126 episodes and 3 years to go from nothing to a Final C release, and thankfully the Final C release did have massive success. So thank you all so much, thanks for coming on this journey with me, and I am very much looking forward to whatever happens next. For the second complete devlog, let's take a look at the Dreadful Whispers by Blythorn Prond. This one was 22 devlogs over 9 months. Starting with the first devlog, titled Starting a New Game Project in Unity. At this point, the game was already in development for about a month, so all the basics are there. The first episode goes over the design of the game and the various mechanics that it has. The game is a 2D puzzle platformer where you control multiple characters and the world has different platforms where each can jump on. Very important to this puzzle and platformer genre is a nice mix of mechanics and varied levels. So from the very first episode he was already experimenting with testing all kinds of mechanics to test them and see which ones fit the final game. Remember that you should always iterate upon your games, and at the same time don't be afraid to throw away something that doesn't work. So experiment, build some new mechanics, and if they fit your game keep them, if not let them go. Also Noah is primarily an artist, so that is why the very first devlog already looks so close to the final game. Jumping ahead to episode number 5, this one is all about cutscenes and the process that he went through to turn them from Photoshop to reality. It's a great example of how you can use any tool at your disposal to achieve the final result. In this case, he decided to make the cutscenes using a regular video editor program, then just using the video player component to play those cutscenes directly inside Unity. So this is always one approach that you have instead of building the cutscenes as actual animations inside the engine. Another interesting thing in this episode is when the final name, the Dreadful Whispers, is announced. So for your own games, don't worry about coming up with a name or the perfect name right from the beginning. Go ahead and build a nice prototype and design your game, start playing out and testing your ideas, your name can wait until a bit later. Then episode 11 is a very important one, it's titled Trying to Become a Healthy Game Developer. Game development and especially solo game development is a very taxing thing. And when you add on top of that the usual issues with social media, especially if you're also trying to create content around your game and constantly checking the stats, when you put all that together it can be very easy to end up completely burnt out. So for one month he decided to do a little social media detox, basically waking up and doing game dev or going for a run or anything other than instantly checking Twitter and YouTube. So the takeaway from this video is game dev is a marathon, it's not a sprint, don't burn yourself out by constantly pushing like crazy. Definitely go ahead and push hard to achieve your goal, but not so much that you go past your limits. I must say this is one thing that I personally only have somewhat figured out. I definitely value physical exercise very highly and I try to only use social media in a limited way just for working, but I still have the thing where I regularly work way too much. 
So if you're having trouble with managing a good work-life balance, all I can say is keep at it. It's definitely not an easy task. I have trouble with it myself, but always keep trying. Jumping ahead to episode 19, and this one is the last week before release. And it seems they didn't learn quite a lot from that episode on taking a break and taking things a bit more slowly. He planned enough time for release so we didn't have to crunch like crazy. This final week, this is the time to make sure that everything is ready. You start sending out some Steam keys, try increasing wishlists as much as possible, and encourage people to pick up the game at launch and leave a review, since reviews are so powerful, both in terms of the Steam algorithm, as well as for your own growth as a game developer to learn what you did well and what you can improve. So as a player, if you want to help out some indie developer, definitely leave a review on their Steam game. And as a developer, definitely encourage your players to leave Steam reviews. I made a quick video on how the Steam review buckets actually work if you want to learn more about that. And then on the very last episode in the playlist, this one is all about stats. So if you're working on a puzzle platformer, which is an extremely crowded genre, very difficult genre, definitely go ahead and look at the stats to see how much you can expect. Alright, so on to the third complete devlog. This one is Sapiens, which has just launched into early access pretty recently. The game is a colony survival sim that started development all the way back in 2015. There are 60 devlog episodes over the 7 years of development. This one is similar to Equinox in that it's a developer making a custom engine. So the very first episode is showcasing a nice custom terrain engine. It supports a huge open world. It already looks pretty optimized. As you zoom in closer and closer, you get more and more detail. The atmosphere effect looks insanely cool, really nice shaders. But at this point, this is just a terrain engine, it's not really a game. And from the voiceover, he didn't start with the intention of making a game, just building a prototype for fun. He even says, quote, I don't know if this will ever turn into anything. Jumping ahead to episode number 10, titled We Have a Name, Ambience, which you might have noticed is not Sapiens. So that's a clue for how development of this game changed massively over the many years. At this point, the design of the game was still more about the terrain and biomes rather than a colony management game. Still lots of iteration with the detail generation logic, trying to make it more and more seamless. The water looks really nice, really fancy shader, but again, still very far from what the final game would eventually become. Jumping ahead to episode number 23, and we already see quite a lot of mechanics that closely resemble the final game, and we also get the first announcement of the final name, Sapiens. At this point, the game was indeed about colony management, so there are colonists, they can gather wood, fruit, and other materials. You could order them to go somewhere, they could research new tech. There's also the nice mechanic about which village to start with. They are randomly placed in the random world and you can pick one that you want to lead. That's a pretty fun unique mechanic for a game like this, giving the player a bit more agency over exactly where they want to start. The menus were obviously still very early, as were a lot of the visuals, but at this point the final game was actually starting to take shape. Jumping ahead quite a bit to episode number 41 and we have some nice gameplay. This was still two and a half years before release, but at this point the game was definitely taking shape. There was nice menus, lots of actions that the units could take, you could plant some trees and they had their own life cycle, starting off as a simple sapling before growing into a full tree. All the sapiens walked around, they had animations for their various actions. At this point he was still experimenting with various mechanics, like what happens when a sapiens doesn't get enough food, so do they get angry or do they leave the tribe? Still wondering exactly how new sapiens would join the tribe, how often women would get pregnant and so on. So still, quite a lot of design questions unanswered, iterating upon your various ideas is a great way to get some answers. Jumping ahead to episode number 55 and alpha testing has begun, however this one is still over one year before the eventual release. Lots more variation with the visuals, there's bloom post processing, everything looks really nice and shiny. Lots more polishing, lots of bug fixing, work on UI and UX. So exactly the kind of things you should be doing just before making your very first public build. And for the final episode at the time that I'm recording this, episode number 60, you can finally play the game. It's out now on Steam Early Access and the game is seeing quite a lot of success. Already has over 300 very positive reviews in just one week, extremely impressive results. So this is one example where a big gamble of working for 7 years on a single game seems to have paid off. Although personally I definitely would not recommend that you follow this path. What you see here, making a game on a custom engine over 7 years and finding some massive success, this is the exception, it's not the rule. But that's the story of this game so far, it's only just now hit early access so this story is continuing. Since the game is selling very, very well, who knows how many more years and how big the final game will end up being. 
I definitely look forward to playing it in a couple of years. Alright, so those are three complete devlogs you can now go watch and binge from start to finish and then go play the complete games on Steam. This was a pretty fun video to research, looking at all the devlogs that exist and see how many games made it to the finish line. There's a bunch of devlog series that start and never finish, but quite a bunch of them actually made it to the finish line. There were a bunch more that I found out, but the video is already pretty long with just three examples, so like this video and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some more complete devlogs. And don't forget to check out the sale on the Asset Store. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.